The two-wheel chariot was a key factor in the development of Bronze Age civilization. After the domestication of the horse, ancient engineers understood that lightweight, resistant and agile vehicles could provide a decisive advantage, mainly in fighting, but even in hunting and traveling. Initially developed in Syria and northern Mesopotamia, around the 2000 before Christ, they quickly spread in all the Middle East, Egypt, Greece, as well as in Europe. War chariots had some common features. The cockpit had to accommodate the passengers. It was closed by light panels on the front and on their sides. Sometimes it could be closed by a sheet on the rear and a dividing panel could be placed between the passengers. The floor was usually realized by interwoven leather stripes, which should have an efficient shock absorbing effect. The axle was fixed to the cockpit framework, with wheels turning around it. This way, the wheels could turn with different speeds, favoring running along tight turns. The pole was fixed to the cockpit and to the axle under the floor. Often, it was obtained by steam bending of wood bars. On the other end, it was fixed to the joke, which often was a curved bar as well. The connections between members were realized by means of tightened leather stripes. Within these common features, a variability can be found in shape, structure and assembly of the chariot elements. The wheels were mostly spoked, but remarkable exception is the crossbar wheel, whose the wheel of Mercurago, which we studied in a previous work, is a famous example. A discussed aspect was the position of the axle. Near East and Egyptian chariots had the axle mounted near to the rear edge of the cockpit floor. It is thought that this way the oscillations around the axle were reduced, promoting a smoother run when the chariot was launched at full speed. Greek, Celtic and Italic chariots had the axle mounted in the central position, approximately under the passenger's feet. This assembly reduced the vertical burden on the horses, as most of the passenger's weight was supported by the axle itself. In our work, we studied these issues by means of modern engineering tools. We used finite elements for evaluating the stability of the vehicle in extremely dangerous situations, such as bumping over a stone or a route emerging to the surface, and we compare the response with the axle in central and rear position. Then we made multi-body simulations in the same running conditions, which allowed evaluating the effect of damping acted by the connection between members, and especially by the cockpit floor. The finite element models included the whole chariot with two passengers, the warrior and the charioteer. The chariot structures was modeled by solid element in hardwood with linear elastic behavior. The joints and the floor were modeled in linear elastic materials as well with the elasticity properties of a leather. The men were modeled with an arbitrary linear elastic material with a total mass of 80 kilos each. The soil was modeled as a rigid surface. Simulations of symmetric bump included a transverse asperity of 3 cm height on the floor, bumped by the chariot with both wheels. Simulations of asymmetric bump included a spherical asperity of 3 cm height on the floor bumped by the chariot with the left wheel only. In symmetric bump, both passengers are thrown in height. The key role is played by the pole, which acts as a spring. This role is increased in the chariot with the rear axle, because the pole is more deformed and reacts with more energy. In a symmetric bump, 
the passenger standing on the side of the spirity is thrown more in height than the other one, as expected. The pole acts as a torsional spring, either for the chariot with central axle and for the chariot with the rear axle. The dependence of the chariot response on the axle position did not appear so relevant. On the other hand, the cockpit floor appeared to have a key role on the passenger stability, so we focused our attention on it. All evidences show that cockpit floors were made in interwoven leather. In addition to elasticity, this solution should provide a very efficient damping thanks to the small sliding between the leather stripes. Thus, we built a multi-body model which allowed rapidly evaluating the effect of the damping coefficient associated to the cockpit floor. What is MBS? Multibody simulation MBS is a method of numerical simulation in which systems are composed of various rigid or elastic bodies. Connection between bodies can be modeled with kinematic constraints such as joints or force elements such as spring dampers. MBS is a useful tool for conducting motion analysis. To be processed, our chariot had to be redesigned accordingly. We chose to operate with solid rigid bodies to speed up the computing time and run more simulation. To do so, all the flexibilities of the body has to be replaced by springs where possible. In the case of the pole, it has to be split in three different bodies. So, in total, we have five different bodies. The yoke, the descending part of the pole, the chariot with the horizontal part of the poles, and the wheels. The yoke is linked to a couple of, of virtual guides in reading the pictures, and slides on them. It is driven by a couple of virtual motors, blue arrows, which are actuated with a particular motion law. The yoke is linked to the first part of the pole by a free rotation constraint. The axis of rotation is longitudinal as depicted. The descending part of the pole and the chariot are connected by an universal joint. The pole is linked to the cross by a rotation joint with vertical axis, while the cross is linked to the chariot by an horizontal axis. In the system, there are not physical boundaries to movement, so the system is free to rotate. Wheels are linked to the chariot's body by rotation joints. The basic structure of the system is now implemented. The system is clearly under constraint and has to be modified to resemble reality better. It is possible to insert a torsional spring between the yoke and the pole. The spring must also include some grade of damping. In the same way, it is necessary to introduce springing and damping between the pole and the chariot. Some alternative solutions were tested, leading to the one depicted in the figure. Three different spring dampers manage the flexibility of the joint, with a cross-section between them. Each degree of freedom of the joint acts on all the springs. This makes the calibration of their characteristics a bit tricky, but guarantees a better resemblance with a flexible component. It is mandatory to introduce a representation of the dynamic char characteristics of the chariot floor. It is supposed that this component was made by interweaved leather stripes connected to an external wooden frame. As a consequence, this layout gives some springing and damping, as highlighted by FEM analysis. According to the rigid bodies and B strategy, it was chosen to represent these features by means of a couple of spring dampers, one in the each passenger of the chariot. An important feature to be implemented is the monolateral constraint under the feet of the passengers, since the, since the floor can keep them attached to itself. The passengers' bodies are also represented by rigid bodies, with the same inertial properties. Human body springing operated by the legs is embedded in the former spring. Since passengers balance themselves using their whole body, also interacting with the chariot chassis, 
His behavior is replicated by using a vertical guide for the solids representing the passengers' bodies. Now, the problem is to find appropriate values for all these springs and dampers, as well as the characteristics of the interaction between the wheels and the soil. Since a previous FEM model is available, it was used as a comparison for calibration. We have to find for spring stiffness and damping, plus one series of interaction values. So, seven FEM tests were implemented loading the chariot in seven simple ways, trying to isolate the most important values. The procedure was iterative, since the springs don't act separately, but are strictly interconnected. A satisfying set of values was found as illustrated in the next slide. It is important to say that damping parameters were found by dynamic virtual testing. A series of drop tests were performed in which Cherios was virtually plunged from a 50 cm height, iterated until the resulting vibration showed an amplitude decay to less than 10% under free cycles. Table 1 represents the resulting parameters assigned to the model. Since the chariot floor characteristics was the most interesting feature to explore under riding condition, it was chosen to create three different sets of values for it, differentiating the damping coefficients for left and right side for the following ride test. A couple of videos show how the vehicle and its occupants manage the bump. We can start with a side view of the process. The chariot stores elastic energy hitting the bump and consequently releases it in a matter of tens of seconds. Also the chariot's floor stores and releases energy, but the presence of damping makes the whole process a lot more manageable by the occupants. In particular, the floor damping plays a key role. Moreover, damping allows the resulting vibration to be compensated in a matter of a couple of cycles, greatly increasing the passenger's comfort. It's worth observing that the right passengers on the left of the server, despite feeling the impact, doesn't leave the platform, giving confirmation of an important feature of the chariot. There's no detachment from the floor, or flight time, as we can name it. Graphs show the vertical displacement of the wheel centers and passenger heads in symmetric bump. As the wheels are concerned, the maximum height varies around 60 to 80 mm in all cases, without dramatic differences between them. As the passengers are concerned, lower figure, on the contrary, the damping coefficient has a strong influence. In case 1, red and orange lines, the right passenger, who has no damping under his feet, begins to oscillate with an amplitude of about 60 mm. The left passenger, on the contrary, does not oscillate, but performs a single jump of approximately the same amplitude. This is because the very high damping coefficients make the damper al almost rigid. In case 2, when a moderate damping is added under the right passenger, his oscillations are significantly reduced but even the height reached by the passenger aside is significantly reduced. The main conclusion that can be drawn from this analysis is that the safety of the passengers dramatically depended on the damping of the cockpit floor, which was called to compensate the elastic energy stored by the pole in bumping. We started a study for comparing the damping effect of floors realized in wood and interwoven rope by measuring the rebounds of a mass freely falling upon them. We used a high-speed camera for determining the instantaneous position of the mass by acquiring images of a disc rotating with the arm. Once the data will be elaborated, we'll have precious information for understanding the insights of ancient engineers who realized such advanced vehicles.